In 1963, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, Shah of Iran, launched a far-reaching series of reforms seeking to modernize the country. It was called the White Revolution, and it consisted of land reform, the enfranchisement of women, the nationalization of forests and pastures, and the institution of profit-sharing schemes for workers in industry. By implementing the revolution, the Shah hoped to gain a base of support among the peasant and working classes of Iran. The White Revolution was popular in Iran, but it had its critics. One of them was Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Khomeini strongly criticized the reforms and the Shah's friendly relations with United States and Israel. Because of this, in 1964, he was sent into exile and settled in the Iraqi city of Najaf. Meanwhile, the Shah remained a popular ruler in 1971, he marked the anniversary of 2,500 years of continuous Persian monarchy since the founding of the Archimenid Empire by Cyrus the Great. Because of the oil crisis of 1973, Iranian oil incomes doubled and Iran achieved massive economic growth. The Shah then directed the growth in oil revenues back into the domestic economy. Elementary school education was made free and major investments were put in the Iranian military. But by 1977, the Iranian economy started to weaken as it was extremely dependent on oil revenues. Also, the new US president, Jimmy Carter, who was critical of the Shah's authoritarian rule, started to pressure him to liberalize his rule. The Shah responded to this by granting amnesty to some prisoners and allowing the Red Cross to visit prisons. As a result of the new reforms, new opposition groups were formed and people started to criticize the Shah's rule. On December 31st, 1977, President Carter celebrated the New Year celebrations in Iran. On January 6th, 1978, an article was published which criticized Homini as a British agent and a mad Indian poet. The article was published in order to reduce the religious opposition to the Shah, which had grown because of the mysterious death of Mustafa Homini, the son of Ruhollah Homini. Some had attributed his death to Savak, Iran's secret police. The article did not succeed in its goal. Religious students in the city, Qom, angered over the insult to Homini, clashed with the police, and as a result, many were injured and some were killed. This was the beginning of the Iranian Revolution. In February and March, riots took place in many cities, including Tehran. Cinemas and bars were set ablaze. The Shah, was very surprised by the protests. During this time, he was ill with cancer and would prove to be very indecisive in the crisis. He decided to negotiate with the protesters and provide them with many concessions. He reduced the censorship and fired all Savak officials in the city of Tabriz. By June, the protests had stagnated and it was assumed that the demonstrations would subside. But in August, they kicked into a high gear. The Iranian economy had sharply declined. And as a result, Prime Minister Jamshid Amuzagar cut spending, which led to massive layoffs. On August 19th, Cinema Rex was set ablaze, which led to the deaths of around 400 people. Both sides blamed each other for the fire. Prime Minister Amuzagar resigned and the Shah appointed Jafar Sharif Imani as his replacement. Under the Shah's direction, the new Prime Minister gave in to opposition's demands even before they were made. The government legalized all political parties and increased freedom of expression. But the protests continued. In September, the marchers started to demand Homini's return and the establishment of an Islamic Republic. 
As a result, martial law was declared. However, on September 8th, thousands gathered in Tehran's Jale Square, being unaware of the martial law declaration. After failing to disperse the protesters, troops fired directly into the crowd and killed 64 people. Further clashes increased this number to 84. This became known as Black Friday. Although the Shah criticized the events, the public still blamed him for what had happened. In October, a nationwide general strike was declared. The Shah did not attempt to break up the strikes, but instead offered them generous wage increases. By November, he was pressured to bring the strikers back to work. Military authorities declared martial law in the province of Khuzestan, and as a result, protests declined and oil production increased once again. That same month, the Shah appointed General Golam Riza Azhari as the new Prime Minister to lead a military government, which consisted mainly of civilian leaders. The Shah also gave a speech, where he apologized for his mistakes, but Khomeini refused any reconciliation and called for his overthrow. Also during the protests, the demonstrators carried the portraits of revolutionary Ali Shariati and former Prime Minister Mohammed Mossadegh, and they too served as a rallying point in the protests. By December, the protests had reached around six to nine million people. The Shah's wife, Empress Farah, urged the Shah to give power over to her so she could crack down on the protests and save the Pahlavi dynasty. But the Shah refused. It was still seen possible to crack down on the protests, as one witness said that the security forces were using kids' gloves against the opposition because of the Shah's refusal to clamp down on them. In January 1979, the Shah appointed one of the opposition members, Shapa Bhaktia, as the new Prime Minister. Although belonging to the opposition, Bhaktia was a liberal critic of the Shah and he had decided to work with him because he was aware of Khomeini's theocratic intentions for Iran. On January 16th, the tearful Shah and his family left Iran for exile into Egypt, where he would die the next year. Bakhtia invited Khomeini to return to Iran, and he did so on February the 1st. He was welcomed by massive crowds, and he quickly started to consolidate power by first appointing Mehdi Bazagan as Prime Minister. This was in conflict with the fact that Bakhtia was also Prime Minister, but Khomeini refused to recognize him. For the next few days, the pro-Shah groups and the opposition groups battled each other in the streets, but the Shah forces were demoralized, and the non-Islamic government surrendered on February the 11th. In April 1979, Iran voted in a referendum to become an Islamic Republic and in December approved a theocratic constitution. Khomeini took up the new position of a supreme leader. This was a surprise to many opposition groups who held liberal views and only expected Khomeini to be a symbolic figurehead of the new government. It would take a couple of years for Khomeini to consolidate power, a hostage crisis where 52 US diplomats were held hostage for over a year, which Khomeini supported, put him into conflict with the more moderate revolutionary factions. As a result, Prime Minister Bazagan resigned and Khomeini replaced him with Muhammad Ali Rajai. In September 1980, Iraq, led by President Saddam Hussein, invaded Iran, as the Iraqi leader worried that Khomeini would try to overthrow his secular government. The invasion rallied the Iranian people under Khomeini, and this too helped him to consolidate power. By the time the war had ended in 1988 in a stalemate, 
Homony had successfully consolidated his power.